Tens is quite the cheerful yet unassuming player who has swept the scene by storm. From being the first Radiant player, to leaving the pro scene for content creation, to then returning as a substitute, expectations for Tens have always been questionable. But then he joined as a stand-in for Team Sentinels and immediately destroyed all the competition. Everyone knew Tens was something special. His individual talent was ridiculous, but his meteoric rise to the top of the Valorant scene isn't just his incredible aim talking. From a failed upcoming talent in Counter-Strike to the face of North American Valorant, let's break down why Tens is now the best player in the world. What's going on, Pro Guides family? It's your host, Sergeant Frost, and today we're going to be covering why Tens is such a dominant force in the Valorant scene and arguably the best player in the world. His unique playstyle and monstrous performance both in the pro scene and in ranked games simply can't be ignored. You might not turn into the next Tens overnight, but he's definitely doing something right. So let's figure out the different factors that make him the exceptional player he is today. We've also recently partnered with Tens himself as well as Team Liquid Screen, the headshot machine, to release courses focused on teaching you the fundamentals to flourish in Valorant, as well as specific topics like mastering the art of the duelist role. On top of that, we have some great Immortal and Radiant ranked coaches who are more than happy to assist you with anything Valorant related. Whatever you want to learn, we've got it. So if any of this interests you in the slightest, make sure to check out our website ProGuides.com. In a team environment, players often bring much more to the table than what their stats simply say. However, we can't completely overlook stats as well. One thing for sure is, Tens puts out insane performances and all it takes is one quick look at his overall match statistics. On VLR, he is the second highest performing player in the region, only slightly behind Asuna on 100 Thieves. However, if you've been following the pro Valorant NA scene, you'll know that Tens was on quite the competitive hiatus after his previous Team Cloud9 was starting to fumble in tournaments. With less games in his pocket and time away from the scene, you'd expect him to be a little rusty. However, on Sentinels, he puts up absurd numbers. Hypothetically, Tens would most likely be over Asuna in stats if he was always on Sentinels, as he's found quite the home on the championship team. On Spike GG, Tens is the number one player statistically barring pro players in the Tier 2 and Tier 3 scene. I say this because these other players are great as well, but they are competing against less experienced teams as they play in less glamorous tournaments. However, Tens is rarely matched against teams outside of the Tier 1 and Tier 2 scene, as Sentinels won't play tournaments that they don't deem worthwhile. He is playing against some of the best teams in the region while still dominating the competition easily. With that said, even his overall stats don't really paint the picture of what happened in Iceland. Sentinels were able to sweep the entire tournament without dropping a single map throughout the duration. This is crazy to think about because Sentinels are the number one ranked team coming from NA, and you know teams are heavily studying their tendencies. Still, Sentinels showed very few cracks across the board and completely demolished every team that was pitted against them. And Tens was definitely a massive contributor to their success. He was the highest performing player at Iceland with the highest average combat score of 289.4. Not to mention, one quick glance at his numbers he pulled against Fnatic shows not only his immense statistical dominance, but his huge impact in game. In the best of five grand finals, he pulled a total of 19 first kills while only dropping two first deaths the entire series. That is an insane statistic that speaks more for his ridiculous skill than his combat score. If you think about that statistic, this means that he gives his team a 5v4 advantage 10 times before he puts his team in a 4v5 disadvantage. It's crazy to even think about this type of play in any game, not to mention against the best team out of Europe. Although there aren't any stats that exactly pinpoint the level of impact a first kill has on a round in Valorant, there are stats that we can pull from Counter-Strike that can give a good idea. According to HLTV.org, in the past year, a first kill advantage in top tier pro play in CSGO gives the team an average of 75% chance to win the round. Meanwhile, barely any teams have more than a 53% chance of securing the opening kill. That's how hard it is to consistently outplay opponents. So, Tens gives his team a massive advantage each time he secures that first kill, not to mention succeeding 19 times out of 21 in the grand finals of the first international tournament for Valorant. It's quite obvious that Tens is extremely talented. However, you can't be one of the best in the game if the work doesn't match up with the talent. I think it's quite overlooked how much Tens pours into his craft of playing Valorant. If he's not grinding Valorant, he's grinding aim trainers or watching competitive play. Simply put, he eats, sleeps, and breathes Valorant and he loves it. Now, you don't have to go and play 10 to 16 hours of Valorant a day like Tens, unless you really want to, but his work ethic is something that few people can match. He is not the player he is today simply off his mechanical talent, but rather the continuous effort over many, many years of perfecting his craft at tactical shooters. Honestly, Tens probably has just more hours in grid shot aim lab than most players have in Valorant. When he has downtime, he's always trying to push his individual skill to the next level. I know everyone's free time is different, but if you're truly trying to become the best, you have to put in the work to do so. Besides, basic necessities like eating and sleeping, which let's be honest, a lot of gamers don't get enough of, we're oftentimes grinding away to improve ourselves in some form. Tens is particularly good at using his time wisely, constantly queuing up for ranked games like it's nothing, and playing aim trainers when he's not busy playing Valorant. I know that he's been watching pro matches on his hiatus, as he's previously stated that it's reignited his passion to keep playing. Whether he's streaming Valorant, watching Valorant, scrimming, or competing in events, he's on the grind non-stop and that is something we can't take away from him. His talent is undoubtable, but his work ethic is something rarely seen at even the top level. Before we get into the rest of the video, we have our question of the day. Today's question is, what do you think is the single most important aspect of becoming a good player? For me, I think that mindset is what drives everything. 
If you don't have the right mindset, then you won't put yourself in the right places to really maximize your time spent. I think that mindset is also why Tens is so incredible as a player, which we'll cover later in the video. Let us know what you think in the comment section down below. Tens is an innovator. He is one of the first players I saw utilizing Viper in beta to its fullest, and it's no surprise that he's done the same thing in the duelist role. His primary agent is Jet, and although I have my own gripes with the agent, no one can ignore the insane skill ceiling the agent carries with its ridiculous versatility. Jet is an agent with some of the most skill expression in the game, and her flexible nature makes her a potent pick in almost all scenarios. Regardless of what Agent Tens plays, his utility usage is not only superb, but it's also quite creative. For example, if you watch any of his gameplays on Jet, he is very comfortable using Dash in multiple ways. Not only is he great at taking fights aggressively and using his Dash to bail him out, this results in him getting a monster amount of frags. He's also one of the first Jets to utilize her Dash aggressively, specifically to take space fast or entry a site for his team. This is a commonplace nowadays, but throwing a smoke forward and dashing into it was something that pushed Jet past the old comfort zone that many players knew existed. It's easy to say that Tenz's playstyle is risky, which we won't deny. However, I see him more so as a player that is calculated in his risk taking. This is partially due to how he plays his agents, as he knows them so well in and out. Even on his other main agent, Reyna, he plays her to her strengths a lot like how Jet is played at a fundamental level. Your goal as these two agents is to find favorable fights and live to tell the tale. There is a reason why he doesn't play a lot of Phoenix or Rays, because they can't do the types of plays in the same fashion that Jet or Reyna can. Tenz has identified his own playstyle and found agents that really play towards his wildcard aggressive style. I assume that this must be even harder to do in Counter-Strike as there was no mobility in the game. You're in a bad position? Well, tough luck because even if you kill one, you'll just get traded. However, due to Jet's dash and Reyna's dismiss, finding that frag and living is possible if you're fast enough. Not only did Tenz innovate a lot of the things we see today as commonplace on Jet, but he also has more subtle techniques that he has in his arsenal that are often overlooked. One thing I see Tenz do a lot than most other Jets is utilize her updraft to quickly peek over vertical cover to find information. This type of behavior can help you rotate faster, push easier, and even spot out enemies for free. I've seen him do this in areas like Ascent on A-Main, but updrafting from lane, you can get a glance over the A-Main windows to spot out any attackers if they are nearby. This can also be great if you have knives as you can find some damage or kills this way as well. Tenz also was one of the first players to learn double updraft spots with his knives to find kills. There are a lot of these spots on Haven. For example, on the attacker side, double updrafting outside of A main will give you an angle on anyone peeking from A long. On the flip side, you can do this with double updraft when retaking A site. Jumping on the box outside of A connector will give you enough height with the double updrafts to spot anyone out for a quick pick. The last thing I want to talk about is his innovative ways with jet smokes. He's really great at weaving in smokes between his shots or kills. This is great because it gives him the option to creep in the smoke and push forward, hold, or even fall back. This is great as it creates a mix-up situation for the opponent as they are not entirely sure what you will do next. It's easy to just use jet smokes to cover off choke points, however, many of the experienced jets today have learned from tens and understand the potency of using it to create question marks on the map. This type of smoke after shots or kills is one of the core things tens does that gives him more options to play like he wants. See, it's easy to get deterred if a play you do doesn't work. Pushing through that negative feeling and seeing a bright light on the end of the tunnel can keep you humble and thirsty to try more. At the end of the day, there is no better way to improve your gameplay besides reflecting on your own gameplay. By giving yourself time to reflect on the mistakes you made as well as correct the plays you made can also slowly reinforce good habits and remove potentially harmful habits that you can inhibit from reaching your peak potential. Tenz is well aware of this and is one of the best examples that I've seen on how this can improve your gameplay. He is comfortable admitting his own mistakes and more than happy to try out new things to see if they are better. I don't think I've ever seen Tenz visibly tilted and I've watched him many, many times. If you tune into his stream, pay attention to his behavior when he dies. He's often unbothered by his deaths, and when he does respond to them, he's looking at them in a self-reflective way. That doesn't mean he doesn't feel negative emotions, but rather than focusing on them, he notices it and changes how to focus how he can fix it for himself. It would be easy for Tenz to blame his teammates, for example, as he is the best player in the world after all, but he knows there's always something that he could have done differently or better. No matter how good you get, there's always more that you can do to improve, and Tenz is no stranger to that wisdom. Proactive play is something all of us do to a certain extent. However, many of the top players including Tenz are probably more proactive than your average Joe, and that's just why they've improved much farther. A proactive play is where you have something in mind before the opponent has done anything to elicit a response. For example, I'm flashing out of here and peeking. This puts you in control of the situation, which is something experienced players learn how to do. This goes back to his self-reflective nature. Instead of blaming the environment around him, he's willing to constantly look inward and analyze how he could have impacted the results differently. On the other hand, if you only play reactionary, you open yourself up to a plethora of different players' play styles, which are harder to always make the right play around. Proactive play is great at helping you get out of your comfort zone and add more to your playbook as well as get you in more control of your games. Sometimes you can sit back and let things happen and just react. However, having a plan of some sort can go a long way. Tenz is not afraid to make plans around himself or the team, and you shouldn't too. No matter how much individual skill you have, working as a team is always key. 
I'm sure we can all agree based on his streams and cheerful personality on stage that he is one of the friendliest players you can meet in your Valorant games. This type of behavior is great at not only keeping your own mental intact, but it also boosts your team's performances drastically. If you are the type of player that has a hard time preventing your emotions from getting the best of you, then I think watching how Tens approaches self-reflection and his friendly demeanor will always help you get an idea of how to remain calm. Additionally, this comes with the added benefit of maintaining good communication and performing up to your standards as well. Being a great teammate goes beyond doing your best as an individual player. Having the ability to relay important information to your teammates is a great underrated skill to have. Although Tens has said in the past that communication is one of his weak points, his friendly demeanor and awareness of his weaknesses is doing him a lot of favors as a player. I don't think it would be an overstatement to say that everyone in the world would love to have Tens on their team. Tens is quite the role model. At a young age, he's accomplished so much in the NA Valorant scene and he isn't going anywhere anytime soon. He is a perfect example of when talent meets great work ethic. We think he's arguably the best player in the world at the moment, so who would challenge him next? We're excited to see it unfold and I hope you guys are too. That's it for today's video. If you enjoyed the breakdown, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to keep up to date with the latest Valorant news, updates, and guides. This has been your host, Sergeant Frost, and I will see you all in the next one.